subtle skills, big results. Welcome to the Ninja Selling Podcast. Welcome back to the Ninja Selling Podcast. Matt and Garrett are back with you again, and we're excited to be spending more time with you. As you're listening to us today and you're wondering where in the world do these guys get all their foundation and background from, go check out ninjaselling.com. If you want to learn more about what we do on a day-to-day basis, which is coaching people individually, we have an amazing group of coaches. You can find that under Ninja Coaching. And if you want to go find like-minded individuals like yourself to listen to the podcast and are interested in growing their business, leading better lives through Ninja, go check out the Ninja Selling Podcast community on Facebook. We have an amazing group of people on there. That group is growing, Matt, tremendously right now. I am letting so many people into that world. So grateful to have you all there. Again, if you're listening to the podcast and you're like, oh, I tried to get into that group and I'm not in, allowed to get in there yet or they haven't let me in, it's because you didn't answer any questions. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> uh, so go back, submit your request again, answer some questions, and I will let you in because I've been clearing it out every day. If no questions are answered, hit the road. Well, it's a little nicer than that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no questions, yeah, yeah, questions, no access for you. No access for you. And again, the important part of this is, is it keeps our community clean. It keeps with a whole bunch of amazing people that are all supporting each other. A lot of people ask, how in the world do you keep the authenticity of this group? That's the way I do it, amongst other ways. So, Matt, good morning, sir. Good morning, Garrett. How are you today, man? I'm good. I'm fine. I got, I got some good energy today. I'm hoping that it's going uh, to keep it going for, I don't know what, 45 minutes? I like it. Yeah. Dude, well, let's let's use it. Let's use it for the forces of good. Forces let's say good. we have a great topic today too, because this is. I mean, we we talk about this a lot. You and me, we don't talk about it a ton on the podcast, but leadership is what we're going to talk about today. We do talk about it a bit, but it is absolutely crucial. And I've said this for years, Garrett, that there is a massive void in the industry when it comes to leadership and. There are some fantastic leaders out there, and there's a lot of great ninja organizations out there that have set up leadership structures, so I'm not saying that everyone is like a problem leader out here, but there is a big gap. We see it, and I see it in the people that I coach. I see it in the people that I talk to in and around real estate outside of coaching, and there are agents who are struggling for the receivership of great leadership and struggling to figure out where can they find good leadership, Garrett. So I'm excited to talk about this today because it's so important. Yeah, it's interesting too. I think real estate itself lends an interesting platform for leaders to show up under because very easily, and and I'm going to throw some words around here so I don't want people to get fired up about it, but there are some things like, I'm going to start a team. Well, the reason for starting a team necessarily is not to being a strong leader. It's about collecting more commissions sometimes. You know, how can I make more money by having more agents underneath me? And then what happens is that you watch these teams grow. And then typically what happens is the good teams with good leaders thrive and and tear off. The ones that were built under the wrong premise kind of crumble over time because there is not a strong leader running the ship Mm -hmm. and keeping it going. Now, well, a team very easily can be looked at as an office, you know, where you have a leader over the top saying, hey, you know what? I want to... How is a place for agents to come and be at, give a good environment for them to come and hang their license at? And technically, I'm an owner. Technically, I'm I'm running and being a leader to this big ship. But very often, these people are all running their own businesses underneath you. And they're kind of running around. And some of them you never see. Some of them, they're in the office maybe once a month. They're doing great business. But because they're not a problem, I really don't need to talk to them all that much. Yeah, They're kind of doing their own thing. And you look at that and you go, okay, so as a company, there are pieces in place that you actively have to do to maintain a strong, healthy organization or a strong, healthy company. And if you let the reins down too far, which a lot of brokerages do, what happens is is when things change, when stress levels come up, when all of a sudden the world dishes out something that we never saw coming... This is where you watch strong leadership rise to the top and the ones that don't have strong leadership really go sideways. And Matt, we see this all every day because these agents that we coach one-on-one that are running their businesses are coming to us and they have two very different narratives. They have this, oh my gosh, 
I were panicking, we're freaking out. You know, my management, I can tell my office is all freaking out. And then we have these other offices and these agents that are coming to us and going, it's all okay. And I'm so grateful for my leadership. And I'm so grateful for how they're addressing this with all of us and walking this through these steps in this new, new situation that we're in. And I'm grateful for them. And it's amazing to hear these two things. And it's not what you would think if you were standing on our side, Matt. It's not like you would look at it and go like, well, that makes sense. That's a huge national company. Like they should be supporting all their people like that. It's funny. Most of the people that I'm having that are coming to me, it's these little boutique brokerages that have, you know, maybe 50 agents tops. It's the high side. And they're like, man, I love my ownership. And I'm like, I'm not saying all the big companies, but it's really interesting to watch on our side. It's very interesting. And um, anytime we talk about leadership, I think of John Maxwell's five levels of leadership and where most leaders in real estate fall is level one, which is simply position. Yeah. Is, hey, we've been you've been handed this title of manager, team lead, or I've just taken that title by saying, hey, I'm going. And so this happens at independence too. It's like, I'm just going to start my brokerage and now I'm the leader. It's like, great. You know, that's the beginning, just having it by title. But there's so much more to leadership going all the way up to the top of this pyramid, which is levels four and five. Levels four is people development. And level five is basically respect. People follow you because they love who you are and what you represent. And we have a lot of level one, two, and three leaders in the, in the real estate industry. And this is where when we get into if you really want to achieve success and if you really want to get through, quote, tough times, which what's going on right now with all of this stuff is small potatoes, in my opinion. Yeah. Right. In terms of like there's way more challenges that we can face in this industry other than this. And if we can't even get through this with growth in mind for our people, growth in mind for our agents, with accountability, with structure, with rules, with and I'm talking about how we run an office or run a team. If we just approach it as like, hey, you know, guys, go out and figure it out. If you get need anything, just come and talk to me. Like that's not going to help people develop. And I see that's where a lot of agents get lost because they're like, hey, I, I don't know what to do. I mean, and I feel bad when people come to me asking questions. Where I'm like, these should be questions that you have a conversation with your broker about. Not because of the legal issue, but because the broker should just be able to be there for you for these kinds of things. You can tell real quick who has somebody they can turn to and who has like they're really on their own. Yes, they they work underneath the company, but they really don't have anybody they can turn to for support and for help and for guidance. And that's what a, a brokerage should be to these these agents out here right now is it should be this guiding light that they can turn to and say, what do we do? And they're going to give them that is their role. So let's let's talk about it from this standpoint too, Matt. One of the concepts we talk about in Ninja Selling is a step-down transformer. Yes. And I give a brief understanding because I know we have a lot of people that listen to the podcast that have not necessarily been to an installation. And so... Basically, the, the way that it works is you have a main powerhouse that is creating a power plant that is creating the power, let's say, for a city. And if you took the power that came directly out of that power plant and you plugged it right into a house, the house would literally burst into flames. If you plugged it into any business, any company, it would burst into flames. There is no way to handle the power that's coming in. It's a too high of a voltage. So around your town, this is every town, you will find these Oh, the name just slipped my mind. They're uh, substations. Substations. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> and at these substations, what they do is they are step down transformers. They take that energy out of the power plant and they, they lower down the voltage and the energy so that it can actually be used by a household. And with that, you all of a sudden have your lights and you have all the things that we need to live in a happy, <laughs> happy way. Here's the interesting thing. When in real estate, we teach this in the installation because you as a realtor for your clients can be a step down transformer or a step up transformer when it comes to your client's energy. We can take any deal and make the smallest thing a massive problem and blow up a transaction. We, we see it done all the time. And you can also be a step down transformer and take that energy that comes in, repackage it and deliver it to your client in a way that they can go, oh, it's not what we wanted, but... Thank you for delivering it that way. And we have some ideas of how we want to move forward with this. That would be the step down transformer. 
in these companies right now, we're watching it. Uh, really uh, amazing agent Ninja got a hold of me and said, my company right now is being a step up transformer. They said they have done a good job for a long time of being a step down transformer, but they have changed. And this whole thing is really interesting to watch in my company because they're firing everybody up. They're raising everybody's stress levels. And on the flip side, again, this goes back to when I'm watching these brokerages that I'm really giving them. I've had a couple of coaching calls, Matt, where I've told my coaching client, go and give your managing broker and your owners the kudos they deserve right now because they are doing everything right right now about calming down the situation and keeping everybody settled. And uh, that's what we need to be. Step down transformers is what brokerages need to understand right now is who they need to be for their agents underneath them. Yeah, no doubt. And that doesn't mean you can't be passionate about things and you can't be convicted, right? The step down transformer is all about removing the, the drama out of the situation. It doesn't mean removing the passion or removing the energy. It means removing the drama. And one great way to do that, we talk about this in Ninja as well, is detach yourself from the outcome. And so when you have managers and owners concerned about their own well-being, which I can totally understand that too, yeah, I get by it. the way. Totally get it. But when you carry that into how you lead your people and you're thinking about yourself, like, well, I need to make sure my people do this, this, and this so I survive, that's where we run into issues, right? It is if you can detach from it and think about the agents. Think about the consumers too, by the way. There's a whole other side of this leadership void that has existed for a long time where brokerages and organizations have not taken it upon themselves to really lead consumers as well. Yep. Which is a great opportunity that they have as well. But coming back to internally, you know, their structure, we've talked about we talk about core values before. There's structure that you can fall back on to make sure that you can detach from the outcome and be the step down transformer. And that is what is the mission of your your company? What is the mission of your office? What are the core values that you all believe in? I'm sure you have them. They're written somewhere. If you don't look at them every day, you probably should, but pull them out and use that as a guide because I also believe that leadership can be learned and can be grown in a way. So you can have leaders that may not be the best, but they can learn. They can grow as leaders and and some can't and they probably need to be replaced. But if we focus first on saying, if you're a company owner or you're a broker in charge running all the managers, look into, hey, are we distributing our values well enough? Are we holding our teams accountable for the leading actions that help us serve our community and fulfill our mission? Start there because that's going to then help you handle anything that comes in to be able to, hey, this is how we can handle it because here's our mission. Here's our values. Let's take this situation going on and apply this to it and we can come up with a solution. And even if you don't have it too, Garrett, this is where I see a lot of leaders sometimes stray is like, give the confidence. Just because you don't have the solution doesn't mean you can't lead your team. That's totally okay. You can say, hey guys, you know what? We don't know what's going to happen but it's going to be okay. We got this. We're going to get through this together. Paint the vision and vision cast it out to everybody that you can at every single meeting. And all of a sudden you're going to get everybody in a good state of mind so that they can go out and produce, which is what we want to see. You hit on a lot of pieces here, Matt. So one is I want to go back to this whole mission statement because I think a lot of companies are one lacking a mission statement. Or what you said is they have a mission statement, but they couldn't tell you what it is. Right. I've had so many companies I've worked with, people I've worked with that they're like, oh yeah, I have a vision statement. I have a mission statement. We have core values. Great. What are they? And they have no idea what they are. And here's the important part about knowing what they are when you're called out on the spot. If you know what they are, you can abide by them. If you have to go look them up, they don't mean a darn thing. So true. So just something that you guys have, you wrote down at some point in time. But when these challenging situations come up, it's not like you go back and go, wait, wait, how are we supposed to handle this? Wait, I know we wrote this down somewhere. Hold on a second. Like, oh yeah, that's right. We're going to lead by giving the highest level of value to the consumer first. Maybe that's what it starts with. And you're like, oh, that's right. That's our core value. But if you have to go look it up, the problem is you're running off scarcity and you're running off a panic mode is what you're doing, which means that you're going to make rash decisions you're going to throw things out to your people and the ones that you're supposed to be leading, that's going to cause confusion. It's going to cause them to be scared. 
And what happens at the end of the day is people are going to look for comfort and they're going to look for security. I have this feeling through this time that we're coming up, we are going to watch, and I could be wrong, and I'm always careful about predictions, a massive movement of agents from different brokerages to different brokerages because the level of confusion and scarcity that's happening in some of these companies, they're going to be talking to a good friend of theirs and their friend's going to be like, we're not worried about it over here. Like, oh man, my leadership, they have got everything put in place. They are on a strong path. We are all comfortable here. We are good. And they're going to be like, you should just come over here. Come over here and hang your license underneath us. Like this is an opportunity, but you have got to be clear about your mission statement and your guiding principles around this. Because if you're not, you are flying by the seat of your pants and you don't want to be that right now. Not in times of change. There was another point that you said, Matt, and I didn't get a chance to write down. So I don't know if you want to jump back in, but. Well, you know, one other thing I've been thinking about too on this is where where a lot of leadership might fall short is the assumption is that the only way we can bring value to our team is to change commission splits, right? Help our agents make more money when it comes to what they can keep from the gross commission check that comes in. And, you know, this has been the race for the last couple decades, Yep, really. It's been the race of like, how do we, do we cap, you know, how do we handle, you know, do we do transaction fees, franchise fees? Really interesting point, Matt. This split. And it's like, well, is that really ultimately what agents want? Now, yeah, if you just said, hey, would you like more money? Who's going to say no? Like, I'd be the first to raise my hand and be like, yeah, let's figure that out. (laughs) Bring, Bring it on. I'd love some more money. But if you come back to what we were just talking about here, the mission statement and core values, and you apply that to say, okay, how do we best deliver that value to our agents so that they can go out and fulfill that mission? That should be the first thought that goes through. And then you can figure out the structure behind that. Because I do know brokerages and teams that still run on 50 and 60% splits that are thriving and the agents are thriving and they love it there because they're receiving the value for that split. And let's also look at this from this perspective as you as the broker, you also have to take first position in this relationship in the transaction with these clients. They're signing agreements with you. And so we get into this whole conversation of, oh, well, as an agent, I'm paying my brokerage this much on the split. It's like, actually, they're paying you that that much on the split. The brokerage is paying the agent. And that might be hard for some agents to hear <laughs> in terms of like, you know, but if as a business owner and a broker, you're looking at it as that way and you say, hey, because of that, I need to make sure that I take care of my people because you have the responsibility to take care of your agents. Whereas if we look at it the other way around, I think that a lot of people forget that when they look at it from the agents are paying the brokerage, oh, then I then I just need to serve the agents in the way that they're paying me. It's like, no, 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 these are your people. These are your independent contractors who are out there waving your brand flag. We need to do everything we can to take care of these people so that they are out there thriving. And then we pay them what they're worth based on how they perform, which then comes down to your split structure, cap structure, whatever it is, which it all might come out the same way in terms of the numbers, but it's the perspective on how you approach it that I think is very important because we're focusing on the money first. That's where you end up losing the opportunity to truly lead. Well, and I think it's interesting too, is there's a lot of really talented people out there. And let's just take this outside of real estate for a second, Matt. Yeah, because this is a problem outside of real estate too, quite frankly. (laughs) There was a lot of really talented people that when you find a corporation or a business that people are so invested in the vision and the direction and the leadership and the ownership of what that company is, they will stay there not because it is the highest paying job. And they will not sit there and go like, you know what, I need to make more money. I'm quitting this job and I'm going somewhere else. They get in this mindset of, no, this is my company. These are my people. This is my organization. And they get there by strong leadership. That's a strong leader and strong ownership that they want to follow that'll put them into that place. And it's not about, again, I'm making the what I'm maybe even what I'm worth. There's a piece there too, where you may be able to go out and make a lot more money, but I'm staying here because this is, this is where I'm supposed to be. And I think that, you know, when these, these changing times comes, like this is your job as a leader is to say, am I providing a place where people feel safe, comfortable? They feel like they have somebody they can turn to, like, this is your time to be the real leaders out here. And again, the opportunities at your fingertips right now, and you can change this direction of this ship right now. We are 
early into this new path that we're on. This is not like, oh, we got off course here a while back and there's no way to recover. This is right now at your fingertips. And all you need to do is take a real big, deep breath. Matt, I, I'm still resonating with me of going back to your core values and going back to your mission statement of what this company is supposed to be. And sit down and settle, settle the water, settle the energy in your corporation, in your people, in your organization. That's what they want from you right now. It's truly what they want. We have people coming to us asking for it. They're coming to us looking for clarity. And uh, yeah, it's just a huge opportunity. And that's where I keep coming to right now. It's just a massive, massive, massive opportunity if chosen to be taken. Oh, huge. I mean, anytime there is a void in an industry, there's always opportunity. And one other point I want to add into this, and there, there's obviously several other topics and conversations we can have around leadership, which we will. But one thing I want to add into this is that real estate is interesting in that it is an industry like if you are your own business owner in entrepreneurship. However, this, this is an industry of salespeople. And we talk about running your business like a business. Absolutely. For sure. You got to do that. But agents they don't leave work at the office, right? A lot of agents don't even go into the office, right? Real estate is a part of their lives, which means you as a leader or as a manager or a broker or an owner are a big part of their lives, which is why when we say, oh, it's not just about the money because this brand, this culture, this identity, this mission carries with them on the weekends. It carries with them at night. It carries with them when you have the agent that is struggling to handle all of the business that, that's coming into them and they're still on their email at 11 o'clock at night and still waking up at 4 a.m. to try to get some things done so that they can then get back on the email at 6 a.m., which there's a whole nother thing there that we can maybe work on with that person. But you as a leader, for the leaders listening, like this is your opportunity to be there for them as people and as individuals because if you can help them live an incredible life along with their business, then the little differences in split aren't going to matter anymore because they're like, I have a life here. Yeah. There, I didn't really have a life. I, I keep coming back to like, so my, my dad ran an office back, you know, in the 80s, 90s, into the 2000s. He had a uh, group of agents that were, yeah, I think that his office at the top was like 250 agents. He ran a pretty big brokerage in uh, Contra Costa County, East Bay of San Francisco. And, uh, it's really interesting. I keep coming back to this because I look at all the managing brokers that I've had in my world and leaders that I've had in my world, and I don't talk to them anymore. Like they, they, they were great. They were fun to work for. They were a boss. And, and then we're done. And we moved along. And that's about as far as that ever went. I've really been paying attention to this recently because the agents that worked underneath my dad, I'm still friends with them today. My dad hasn't run an office for I can't tell you how long. <laughs> but these people are still, I still communicate with them through social media. We still, you know, talk about it. It's funny, as I just made a post the other day and one person brought up about, you know, remembering when I was a kid in, in the office that my dad was running way back when I was three years old. They're still friends. They still talk with my parents all the time. And I still have conversations with my parents about all the people that he managed and worked with in that office. And he knew them on a different level. He knew them very, very, very personally. And they hung out and partied and had great life together. They were in a world together as well as sold a ton of real estate together. They were one of the top offices in that town. I look at that and go like, I've never had a, a managing broker or a leader like that necessarily. And I think it's a real interesting thing to say, like, you know, the the roadmap is there. You don't have to look very far to find really good examples of really strong leaders. There's books written. You can go look at successful companies. Just run up the ladder and look at that leader at the top of it and ask yourself, am I running as a person that is leading my people like that? Or am I sitting here just only concerned about the bottom line of this company and just kind of throwing everybody out there to the wolves and firing everybody up right now. You have an opportunity here right now. And I know none of you know my dad. There's some of you listening out here right now that might be saying, yeah, I took a class from Walt Fry way back in the day. And there might be some of you that says, Walt Fry was my managing broker. I have a great friend who's my age that actually got a chance to work under my dad as, an, as, a, as a real estate agent. 
And she still talks about my dad like he is, he's my dad and I love him. But it's funny to hear somebody go like, let me tell you about Walt Fry <laughs> because he was my leader and he was my my managing broker. And, and it's powerful when you get a chance to be that leader for somebody. Take the reins right now and be that leader to these companies. Be that step down transformer. It's an amazing opportunity. It's right here in front of you guys. And your agents are asking for it. And when we look in about three years down the road, you're going to probably come back to this episode or you might stumble into it and go, oh, that's interesting. I can see which companies had strong leaders and which ones were flying by the seat of their pants. And it, you might be shocked at some of the names tied to the ones that you're like, would have never thought they were flying by the seat of their pants. I am shocked every day right now, Matt, when I hear certain companies that I'm like, really? That's how they're handling this? And like you said, there's opportunity to shift. We're all fallible as humans and, and leaders too, right? But if you if you don't take the opportunity to to show up and fill this void that exists, there may not be much leadership in that future, right? So I would challenge everybody today that's listening, if you are a, a leader, a team lead, if you're a managing broker, if you're a manager, and even if you're an agent, that can because leadership doesn't necessarily have to be position dependent. You can still lead as an agent. You can still lead as a voice in your office and you can be a, a beacon for other people. And so I'd say for everybody listening, but particularly definitely the people who are in the position to where they're looked at as leaders, to fill this void, to show up, to be for your people and serve them in a way that's going to help them succeed and fulfill the mission that you've set forth. Because that's going to make an incredible impact, an incredible change. You're going to change lives and you're going to change your bottom line. I mean, that's going to be a really great result of this as the money is going to flow in too. So I have an analogy that I'm sitting here sitting on Matt right now that I want to use, but I'm kind of going back and forth on it. So if it's too soon, everybody just roll with me and we'll, we'll go with it. But I have this picture of my head of a container ship. You all know where I'm going and why this might be too soon. <laughs> but here's my thought, because it that has nothing to do with, with the incident that happened, the tragedy that happened. But when I think of a container ship, a really strong leader that is guiding a container ship, a big organization like that, has a very large rudder that's stuck in the water so that when they want to guide the ship and turn it, they can make slight movements up in the captain's helm. And that boat will turn and they can guide it and they can control this thing. A weak leader has a very little rudder in the water. And what happens is, is they're frantically trying to guide this ship, grabbing the wheel and they're turning the wheel and it's not really changing the ship very much. It's not going. And all they can do is panic. That's all they can do is panic. And then everybody down below them, all the crew on the deck is watching their leader panic. And then they start to panic because they're going, what, like, what is going on? We're out of control. We don't know what's going, what's happening here. And you earn that control of that ship and the confidence level that needs to come in, the understanding of how your business works. All these pieces have to be there so that you have a large rudder that's following this ship that you can sit up in the helm and slowly touch the wheel and guide this thing where it needs to go. And you can remain calm and poised. That's what your people are asking for you. So again, I, I hesitated using this analogy because of the incidents that just happened, <laughs> but it's the one that I keeps coming into my head of, this is how you control a big ship like that. But you, you got to have the right rudder in the water and the right setup to be able to, to lead with confidence. And um, hopefully that resonates with everybody. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Well, with that, gosh, guys, thanks for joining us on this conversation. It's been one we've had on our list to talk about for everything that's come down with the with the NAR proposed settlement and stuff like that. So this has always been a conversation topic for us that we wanted to bring out. And so we're happy to share it with you. Thank you guys so much for listening and joining us on this episode of the Ninja Selling Podcast. There's more coming on the back end of this. So continue to stay tuned and hit up our Facebook group. Head over to Facebook, search for The Ninja Selling Podcast. You'll find our group where we do post the episodes as well. So if you want to comment on them, you can comment right below the post that we put in there on the release days. Pretty much every release day, every now and then, 
I forget to post it on a release day, but the episodes get in there. You can comment on them and join that incredible community. On April 1st, April 1st, you didn't forget. No, I did not forget on April 1st. That's for sure. (laughs) Well, guys, thanks for joining us. Hope that you have an incredible day out there today. We'll see you on the next episode. Garrett, thank you, man. Appreciate it, everybody. Thank you, Matt. If you enjoyed today's episode and would like more, visit us at the ninjasellingpodcast.com. There you will also find links for more information about ninja selling and coaching. Have an incredible day.